Hi everyone, I hope you all had a lovely Christmas and as this year is about to draw to a close, I wanted to thank you all for your support, for letting me into your lives a little bit through your phones and your computer screens and for sharing some of your life with me through the comments that you leave on my videos and through the private messages that I've received and for embracing what I do. When I hear that the stuff I do has made someone um, see things more clearly or it's made them laugh, you know, it's so important with all this craziness that the laugh. It really means a lot to me. So thank you for coming along with me on this crazy ride. Only yesterday evening, somebody left this message in a live chat saying that they had desisted from going down the surgical medical transition path and that I was one of the people that helped them to come to that decision. Not the only one, but one of them. And just seeing that in the chat was, you know, that's huge. 2021 has been quite the year here on Turf Island. Um, so I made a list of some of the good things. I'm sure this is not all, but uh, it's, it's, it's good stuff. So we've had the Maya Forstetter victory. We recently had the Harry Miller victory. The charges against Marion Miller were dropped eventually. The deplorable Adrian Harrow was suspended for a month by his professional body. The conversion therapy ban consultation has been extended to, I think it's the 4th of February now. And we've had the legal win on how the sex question should be answered uh, in the English census. Also, we've seen a number of very big and very important organizations leave Stonewall UK's diversity championship scheme, while at the same time, seeing the LGB Alliance gain ground. They even had their first conference in October. I was very lucky that I was there to experience it firsthand. And yeah, they're beginning to have the ear of, of some very important people in parliament now. So that's all good news. I know there's still uh, an awful lot to be done and it won't be done overnight, but it's good to take a moment to just reflect on all these all this progress that's been made in these last 12 months. And that's that's mainly down to the efforts of some very brave and formidable women. It's their determination, their vision, and their creativity that's helped us make that progress. And I, I was very lucky to have met some of them this year. And it's really good to see now that more men are joining in too. There's a bunch of gay guys that are now in the process of setting up something called the Gay Men's Network and they're looking to take direct action. So it'll be interesting to see what they'll be doing in the next year. And uh, it looks like I might get involved in that myself uh, in some way. So exciting times. I'm honored to have been part of the pushback, even in a small way. And in this video, I just wanted to give a little overview of the woo-woo busing that I've done this year and what some of the highlights were for me. I'll also share some footage and some photos that I haven't shared before. One is a little song from a video that I sort of abandoned. I was working on it for like two weeks and then I thought, ugh, this is boring. And we'll have a look at what's coming up for 2022. So quick overview. In 2021, I brought you nine songs. Lesbians, boys and gays, we're still fighting every day To rid the world of shame around same-sex attraction If you can see them on TikTok posting with me All that he wants is to have a baby He'll need a woman cause all that he wants is to have a baby Just keep your sis to yourself Take the word and stop it where the sun don't shine It's sun don't shine It is man I am a real woman, okay? It is man When the woo woo strong in your neighborhood, who you gonna call? Woo Busters! In the ladies, you can get your willy out. In the ladies, you can wave it all about. In the ladies, I made 10 video essays and reaction videos where I respond to things that are happening in the news or what certain woo woo clowns are coming out with or take a particular aspect of gender woo and then dive into it a little deeper. I really enjoy making those. They're quite time consuming, but I'm hoping to do more in the new year. This year I've had 11 articles published, 10 in Lesbian and Gay News and one on the 11th Hour blog by Jennifer Billick. So I want to thank 
lesbian and gay news and Jennifer for giving me those opportunities. As a child, I always had dreams of being a writer. My dad got me a typewriter at one point and then um, no Saturday morning or Sunday morning was ever the same because I'd just be banging away at like six in the morning uh, and wake up the whole house. If you haven't read any of my stuff yet, the two pieces I'd recommend would be When Transition Regret Pays, for which I interviewed two detransitioners, one a gay guy in his early 20s and uh, a woman in her early 30s. And the other piece is The Accidental Camp of Trans Activism, where I look at how they make themselves look so utterly ridiculous with such ease, why so many gay men are drawn to it somehow, and how it may all well lead to a backlash against LGB people in general. And then there were the protests. I've been to eight protests um, in 2021. That doesn't include the Speaker's Corners events organized by Kelly J. Keane and Standing for Women. I've been to about four or five of those, but these are eight protests outside of that and I think it's so important to go out there in a boots on the ground kind of way and to help create visibility for all these things that we're fighting. The first one was a safe women's sports protest in London in June outside the New Zealand High Commission. The message was clear keep men out of women's sports and this was in response to Laurel Hubbard representing women in the weightlifting category at the Olympics. This woman with the yellow hair just rocked up out of nowhere with that massive inflatable penis. And a few weeks ago, I bumped into her in a bar in London. It was hilarious because, you know, the hair is quite recognizable. So we had a good laugh about it all. And I ended up dancing in the street with Kira Bell. That was definitely unexpected and a little highlight of the year. A few weeks after, I went up to Glasgow to support Marion Miller at the Marion Miller Rally, which was organised by For Women Scotland. I just want to say a massive thank you to everybody who came here today. I remind you all that women won't wish. And the women need to make a difference. Everyone needs to make it shout as loud as we can, or we won't make any difference. Enjoy your day and enjoy the speakers. Thank you. Um, on the day she asked me to speak, which is not something that uh, that I'd prepared for. So I just kind of spoke off the cuff and apparently terrified the man who's also scared of ribbons. <laughs> I went back to Glasgow for Marion Miller's court date at the end of August. Women won't wish! Women won't wish! Women won't wish! A few days after, we took the turf train to Edinburgh to protest outside the Scottish Parliament against the Scottish government's plans to introduce self-ID. And that's where we saw a perfect example of what I call the accidental camp of trans activism. This bloke was then reported in the press as a woman, while the actual woman is referred to simply as a protester. At a women's rights protest. I mean, you couldn't make it up. This protester had the perfect response to this bloke, though. And you're not one of us. Women won't reach. I have to admit, it wasn't easy seeing the counter protesters waving around the rainbow flag, which is supposedly representative of my community, my home, if you like. And yet here I am on the other side, and I couldn't disagree with their lunacy any more than I do. Overall, it was a, a good morning. There were fantastic speeches, but with the counter protesters there and their aggression, the atmosphere was very spiky. So when afterwards a group of women asked me to sing the penis song, just have a bit of fun, I said, all right then. Back in London, there was another protest organized by Standing for Women and Make More Noise outside the offices of The Lancet and Labour HQ. Only women have services! Only women have services! Can you believe you've got to say it? No! 
My next stop was Cardiff. That was a protest organized by a number of women's rights organizations and LGBT Alliance Cymru, which means Wales. And we were there to protest the Welsh government's plans to push through something called the LGBTQ uh, action plan, you know, just, just all gender woo, uh, nothing there about lesbians or gay men or recognizing that sex is a thing. So we were there to protest against that. There were some counter protesters there, about 20, 25 of them, mostly very young. They tried to drown us out with whistles and also showed us what it looks like to be kind. The other protests were very much about me supporting women, but this protest was different. I was here as a gay man to defend what it means to be a homosexual and to defend the rights of people who are same-sex attracted. Mr. Drakeford, we are gay, lesbian and bisexual people. We shouldn't have to deny our sexuality to validate someone else's magical gender identity. But we should have every right to our own spaces our own voices, to set out our own boundaries and to be free from abuse. If I am a homosexual, not a homogenderal, I am not cis and I will definitely not go back in the closet. And back in London, I joined the Come Out of Stonewall protest organised by DJ Lippy, where I also spoke. And then there was a, an anti-surrogacy protest, a small one uh, organized by Object that I went to as well. And those were, those were all the protests of 2021. I want to thank everyone who welcomed me at these protests, who put me up in their homes or who sorted out accommodation and who shared their food with me and were happy for me to meet their families. Thank you so much. Your kindness and hospitality has been absolutely incredible. And I'm really moved, you know, by all that, especially now looking back and just to see the, the amount of it. So thank you. I've got various souvenirs like my suffragette ribbons and somebody gave me this suffragette uh, fan saying biological sex is real. And I was given this beautiful slate. Absolutely love it. So I'm keeping all these things safe here at home. There's also some other things where I've been involved more behind the scenes in terms of video production and podcast production. And I wrote some chants that were used by parents who were protesting outside gender clinics in the States. Hey, hey, USA, wake up to the gender craze. Say it now, it's not delay. Trans and kids is not okay. Hey, hey, USA, wake up to the gender craze. Say it now, it's not delay. Trans and kids is not okay. Highlights of the year. First highlight is a very recent one. In the Ladies was awarded a trophy for Song of the Year at the first annual Turf Awards. So thank you so much for the person who organized this. Uh, it was a poll on Twitter by Jennifer Gingrich. And thank you. Thank you for including me uh, in the nominations. And thank you for everyone who voted. It's a great way to, to end the year. Thank you very much. Meanwhile, It Is Ma'am has notched up 417,000 views on Facebook, which is crazy. Like, when it hit 100,000, I was like, oh wow, this is, this is awesome. But now it's, uh, it looks like it's, it's going to be heading for the half a million mark, probably mid-January, if it goes on the way it is. It might just stop there, right? I may not hit the half a million, but that would be awesome. Out of those 417,000 views, I think there may well be a large percentage that hasn't come across this before. And you can see in the comments section that the bait is quite lively. Uh, a lot of people don't seem to be down with all this, I'm a lady uh, stuff at all, which is good to see. But then a lot of them also don't seem to realize how serious this is. For example, they may leave comments saying, mate, you're a bloke. And um, if you were to go to prison, they'd put you in the men's prison. And then I say, well, actually, they may well end up in the women's prison if they say that they, you know, identify as a woman. And then the people respond back going, oh, for real? And I go, mm-hmm. Next highlight. In October, the LGB Alliance had the first conference, as I mentioned, and I was very lucky to be there. I was doing some volunteering on the merchandise store, uh, but I could still go to, I, I saw most of the talks live, which was great. 
and it was it was just wonderful to be there with you know hundreds of other like-minded people nobody announcing their pronouns you know at one point i was talking to the to a butch lesbian and then someone from the catering staff saw her from behind and just went excuse me sir and we both just laughed then i spotted maya forstetter and i wanted to go up and say something but i started getting very shy because i was like you know here's a woman who's done an incredible thing and who am i right but she saw me and she just came up to me with wide open arms and went, Mano! And gave me this, this big hug. I have to say, Maya gives really good hugs. So that, that, was, that was a really nice moment. And then she's like, oh, let's take a selfie. Okay. One moment at the conference where it really hit me how big it was and what an important day it was, is when I was upstairs, inside, looking out through these massive windows and seeing all these LGB Alliance flags flying high, just a, a stone's throw from the Houses of Parliament. That was beautiful. The Magdalene Burns Tribute. There's a song that I did in February this year that I wanted to highlight, and that's my Magdalene Burns Tribute. Magdalene was hugely influential in me, you know, opening my eyes and going, what the hell is going on? So I thought, what if I take like key bits from different videos and put them together in one video? And then I started thinking about, there's a, a track from, I think it was the late 90s, called um, Wear Sunscreen by Baz Luhrmann, which is just, you know, some nice music. And then you have an old man's voice dispensing live advice with some singing at the end. And I thought, can I do something similar? with Magdalene's videos. So I started creating the music and then I started putting different bits from her videos to the music in a, in a very specific order. So it told a clear story. What is a woman? Why does it matter? What's going on? How do we fight back? Kind of thing. So then I thought, okay, this is working well. Now I need some singing, you know, what, what, what would be a good chorus? And the one thing she kept saying is a woman is an adult human female. So I thought, okay, those are the perfect lyrics for a chorus, but I can't sing him because obviously I'm a guy and I need a woman to sing this. So I found a singer called Nahanda from the UK. So she was the first person to record the chorus. And then I also got hold of Thistle Peterson in the States, who is a folk singer. So she then recorded her vocals on top of that, but she recorded it with a harmony, which worked really well. So when I heard the two together, I'm like, wow, you know what, I need me a whole choir of adult human females. So I managed to find 10 other women who contributed their vocals. And working on this was such a joy because I'm sitting there on my computer, kind of weaving all these voices together. And some are lighter voices, some are more earthy, some more powerful. They all have a, a different tone and timbre, tim timbre, timbre, <laughs> if you like. And I'm weaving them all together into one beautiful sound that makes a powerful statement about what a woman is. I've listened to them sing it over a hundred times, but it never fails to move me. And one thing that really struck me once I put them all together is how this is such a uniquely female sound. These are women's voices. This is the kind of sound that only women can produce. Woman, adult human female, woman. I was very pleased with how it all turned out. Thank you so much for everyone that took part in that. And even more pleased when people started leaving comments on the video saying that it had helped them to discover Magdalene. Then somebody sends me a video from the States where there was a women's rights protest outside the Washington Monument. Kara Dansky was one of the speakers there. And they start singing the chorus from the Magdalene Burns tribute. So. One moment I'm cooking something up in my bedroom. The next, women are singing this in the very same place where Martin Luther King did his I Have a Dream speech.
The other song where I had a wonderful group of Turvin to help me out was, of course, The 12 Days of Christmas. And thank you so much to everyone who took part in that. And of course, it gave us this glorious moment where Kelly J. King goes all a vita on us and goes, Bye, So that's a bit of a taster of what I've been up to these last 12 months. I wanted to show you this, so especially like new subscribers who maybe have seen one or two of my songs, uh, but don't really know about all the other stuff I do, that they get more of a, a rounded idea of, of what I do. And I do this full time now. This is like, I'm in this 100% because it's so important to me. And I'm in it for the long haul. What's allowed me to do this is your support on Patreon and via PayPal. Without that support, I wouldn't be able to do this. I'm still eating into my savings. That's my choice. I was made redundant um, at the end of May. So for the first five months, uh, I was still getting like my furlough pay. I haven't had that since May and it's your contributions that are, are keeping me going. Um, may have to look for, for part-time work. I don't want to get full-time work um, because then I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing. I'd love to continue, if not do more uh, next year than what I've done this year. So if you've enjoyed my videos and my articles, if they've made you think, if they've made you stay a bit sane with all this craziness going on, that's something that people often say to me, that it's, it's my stuff is helping the help of them keep a little bit sane. Um, if it's made you laugh, you know, again, laughter is so important in all this. I think, you know, laughter is one of the, the things that is going to help us pull through. If you believe in my work, then I'd like to invite you to either become a patron supporter or to support me via PayPal. Thank you so much to everyone who has supported me that way this year so far. Without you, I wouldn't be able to do this. And I know these aren't the easiest of times, so thank you so very much. I'd also like to thank everyone who subscribed to my YouTube channel, who follows me on Instagram and Facebook. Oh, so I, I get quite a lot of friendship requests, like friend requests on Facebook, on my personal like Facebook profile. And I tend to ignore those because I want to keep that just like simple. I've got a few friends that I'm connected with, you know, from university days, from places where I've worked and that kind of stuff. And they post pictures of their cats or their lunch or their holidays. You know, I just want to keep that kind of like nice and simple. But if you want to connect on Facebook, do it via my Mr. Menno Facebook page, which is just facebook.com forward slash M-R-M-E-N-N-O. And you can private message me via that page as well. And a thank you to everyone who's liked my stuff, left a comment, who shared it online. Don't ever underestimate how much of a difference all that makes. It's all part of pushing back against the woo woo. And a very special thank you to my friend Joey, boots on the ground, bright. Joey, thank you so much for your friendship and your support. Joey's been organizing quite a few protests around the States this year, especially outside gender clinics. And here's a picture of her outside the, um, the Netflix protest, you know, when Dave uh, Chappelle had his so-called transphobic moment and there were protests outside. So she was one of the counter protesters there. And one bloke, tall bloke with long arms and lady feels, stole one of the women's signs. So this is a picture of her trying to steal it back. I think it's a very powerful shot that sort of symbolizes how women are trying to reclaim what's been taken from them. Oh, and here's that little song that I put together for a video that I, I started making in, in August, but then I abandoned it. It's uh, basically a response to somebody who gave me some criticism online and said I was pretty much just an evil twink who got old. So here is a section from that video that I never finished. They called me dishonest, a liar, a prick, and an evil twink who got old. <laughs> Twink is gay slang for a young, pretty gay guy. And I guess I was kind of twinky when I was younger. And now I'm 45. Is that bad? Are twinks not meant to age like other humans? Try new Twink for Life, the anti-aging cream that will keep the wrinkles and ageist homophobic abuse at bay. Twink. Are we supposed to just die young, stay pretty? It made me think of an early 90s song by Madonna, who is even older than me, my God. So I reworked it a little and here it is, an aged twink's lament. So to the person who called me this, thanks for the inspiration and look what you made me do. I used to be a twink one. I used to be. 
I used to be so young and cute Now I'm just an evil old gay Feeling misunderstood What went wrong And what is going got at least 15 videos in the planning for the new year so uh, there's, there's lots to do and one of them yes I know I've kept you waiting for like six months those who are waiting for facial feminization surgery part two January I promise okay obviously I'm gonna do this video that video will be the next one that I look at oh god but I might do a response video to that woman who did a piece in the new yorker about my penis my love or whatever my penis my life okay so my penis my life and then facial feminization surgery part two so happy new year everyone and no matter what it brings us let's keep it real and keep smiling to all my paypal and patreon supporters thank you so very much special shout out to my big spenders help her open Mama Turv and the Turvin Teens, Dark Horse, The Lovely Mary, Me Julie, Julia, and Stephanie. Thank you.